Today on The Daily Bell Ringer, we're taking a look at the Oregon Trail. Hello, welcome to The Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. And as always, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So today, the Oregon Trail, and I promise we're going to survive this episode without dying from dysentery. Now, if you didn't get that reference, that means you're not as old as me, or you're not a fan of retro 1980s or early 90s video games. But if you're interested, actually, I do have a link down in the description to a uh, online site where you could play the Oregon Trail uh, video game. Uh, the Oregon Trail. Really, in the early to mid 1840s, this became a big thing. Thousands of Americans began to, you know, basically get Oregon fever that they wanted to move west, and they're really prompted by several things. If we think about, it, of course, we have Lewis and Clark who had explored that whole Louisiana territory that was beginning to pull people to the west. We had Manifest Destiny, and of course, you know, if you want to see more about Manifest Destiny, check out my other video talking about Manifest Destiny, which was pulling Americans to the west. But then also we had an economic depression, the Panic of 1837, that uh, basically. Made Made a lot of people see that there wasn't a lot of opportunity for them where they were at, and so they wanted to move west to create a new life. All right, now the first uh, journey west, I guess you would say, or the, the guy who really at first establishes this trail is a guy named Marcus Whitman. Um, he was a Protestant missionary who basically uh, was convinced he could convert Native Americans to Christianity in the West. And so in 1835, he begins to go West, and he follows this pathway all the way to the Rocky Mountains, but he turns back. The following year, he tries the trip again in 1836 with uh, a, a small group, with, with women and children with him. And he actually makes it across the Rocky Mountains all the way to Fort Vancouver, Washington. And what his party did was basically prove that you could make this trip. Even though it was dangerous, it could be made with a family. So the next big move of Americans to the West takes place uh, with the immigration of 1843. Uh, this was a one big group of 120 wagons over over a thousand people, thousands of heads of livestock that began to journey west, heading from Missouri to Oregon. And really, once they made it to Oregon, this really opened up the floodgates to more pioneers following behind them and following the trail. So Americans began to organize uh, societies or clubs to gather information and start planning this huge trip. And also, Americans began to save money for uh, these wagons, these covered wagons that we think of today, the uh, Constoe wagons or, you know, the, the prairie schooners, whatever you want to call them, basically kind of like the RV or mobile home of the West that basically you have everything that you needed in, in this wagon. Um, the wagon cost somewhere around $250 in 1840s money. Of course, today that would be closer to $7,500. So this was a pretty big investment. And of course, people would be selling their homes, selling all of their belongings to start gathering the materials they needed. But these wagons, they could carry up to six tons, usually pulled by six horses or oxen. And and every, like I said, everything was in this wagon. It was the, you know, the mobile home or RV of the, uh, of this journey. Most settlers started the journey from Independence, Missouri, and they tried to depart somewhere in April or May, because if they left in April or May, they knew that they could make the entire journey before winter really set in, because you did not want to get caught out west in the Rocky Mountains or the Sierra Nevada Mountains in the winter. And I might make another video about what happens if you get caught there, because there were some settlers that got caught. There. But before leaving, uh, they would have to get enough food together for a five to six month, 2,000 mile journey. And you got to think about that. That's on foot. That's not driving or anything. I mean, they could maybe average close to maybe 10 or 15 miles a day. And so this is a very, very difficult journey. So the journey had several different routes, but most pioneers would go cross the Great Plains to Fort Kearney, which is in present day Nebraska. From there, they would then follow the Platte River for over 600 miles until they reached Fort Laramie, which is in Wyoming. The next big landmark was Independence Rock, where a lot of settlers would carve their names onto this rock. Um, and it kind of marked the halfway point that you needed. And the reason they called it Independence Rock was because it was expected that you reach this before July 4th. Otherwise, you weren't going to make the journey before winter set in. So Independence Rock was a big landmark. Um, from there, they would then start crossing the Rocky Mountains, and then they would find the uh, Columbian River 
and follow that then to Oregon City. So the entire route basically went from Independence, Missouri, all the way to Oregon City. Now it's estimated that one in 10 settlers died uh, on the journey because again, you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere. If you get any kind of illness like cholera, dysentery, you get hurt, anything like that, there's not really anybody around that could help you. Now the, the trail did have several different branches. I mean, yes, the main trail went to Oregon, but there were trails that would lead into Washington and then ones that would leave in, into California. And it's estimated that over 400,000 Americans made the trip uh, heading west. But as more and more Americans headed west, of course, little towns and little uh, supply posts would popped up along the way, making the journey much safer. But by the late 1800s, of course, we have the Transcontinental Railroad that is built. And basically with the building of the railroads, that basically eliminated the need for the trail itself. So again, hopefully you learned something there. Don't forget to answer question number five in the uh, comments below. And don't forget to check out the link to play the Oregon Trail game online. Okay, thanks for watching.